In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform preventative maintenance and repair of the Kimray Pneumatic Diaphragm Balance Liquid Dump Valve. Hi, I'm Roland with Kimray, where we help energy producers solve their biggest control challenges. The pneumatic liquid dump valve is available in either pressure opening or pressure closing configurations. We will be using the pressure to open model for this repair. There are a few differences regarding part orientation which can be found in the spec sheets for your exact product on Kimray.com. Though the body will last for many years, the seals should be replaced regularly, about once a year. We also recommend inspecting the valve seat every 6 months under normal conditions. Under severe conditions, inspection should be done regularly until a predictable pattern can be established. For this job, you will need the following tools, equipment, and chemicals. Remove the breather plug from the housing with a 916 wrench. Remove the treble indicator from the housing with an adjustable wrench. Be careful because it will pop out. The gasket will come off with the housing or may be stuck to the bonnet. Remove the spring and the treble indicator stem and set them aside. Use a 916 and 1116 wrench to remove the nuts and bolts from the bonnet. You may need a flathead screwdriver or a similar tool to separate the bonnet from the housing. Remove and discard the diaphragm. The spring behind the diaphragm plate is spring-loaded, so be careful when disassembling. Loosen the diaphragm plate with channel locks. Then apply downward pressure while carefully unthreading by hand to remove fully. Remove the spring. Use a 916 wrench to remove the bolts from the lower housing. Carefully pour out and discard the oil from the housing. Secure the body in a vise at a 90 degree angle. Use a large punch to tap out the cage assembly through the top of the body. Be careful not to strike the stem and to only use the punch on the seat. Remove it in a controlled manner and not let it fall out, which could cause damage or injury. Secure the cage assembly in the vise by the lock nut. Use a spanner wrench or Kimray diaphragm nut removal tool to hold the diaphragm nut still while you unthread the stem assembly with an adjustable wrench. Put a 7 16 wrench on the flats of the stem and remove the diaphragm nut with the Kimray tool. Remove and discard the diaphragm. Then remove the plate and set it aside. Use a pick to remove and discard the large o-ring around the cage. Then remove the cage from the stem. Remove and discard the gasket from the bottom of the cage. This could also be stuck inside the valve. Use a 7 16 wrench on the flats to remove the stem. Remove and discard the seat but keep the ratio plug. The separate disc and seat found on models prior to 2018 has been replaced with a reversible seat. If only one side is worn, it can be flipped 180 degrees to be used again or replaced from the repair kit. Remove the nut from the vise and discard. Put the housing in a vise and use the Kimray stem guide tool to remove the stem guide assembly. Remove and discard the o-ring around the threads of the stem guide. Then remove and discard the backup, o-ring, and second backup. At this point, your valve is disassembled and you're ready to inspect the parts. Clean around the o-ring groove on the stem guide. Any loose particles left in the groove could cause leakage. If the groove surface shows light scratches, it may need to be replaced. Inspect the bottom surface of the cage. If there is excessive corrosion or erosion or any damage that could create a leak path between the cage and seat, discard and replace. 
Also check for fragments of gasket material which can cause misalignment of the body surface. Inspect the ratio plug. If there is excessive amounts of corrosion or erosion, it will need to be replaced. Clear the stem guide communication hole of any debris. Check the diaphragm nut to make sure that the threads are intact and that the communication hole is clear of debris. On the valve body, inspect the inlet and outlet threads to make sure they are intact. Inspect the seat area where the gasket will sit and check for any severe washout inside the valve. Use a parts washer or a wire brush degreaser and the appropriate PPE to get them as clean as possible. Place the o-ring on the outer groove of the stem guide and apply grease. Put in the first spiral backup followed by the o-ring and the other backup. Add grease to the inside. Tighten the stem guide into the housing. Place the new o-ring onto the cage. Apply grease to the o-ring. Then apply grease to the bottom of the cage where the gasket will set. Put on the gasket and apply grease. Then set the cage aside. While holding the stem, slide on the ratio plug followed by the seat. If you're using a reversible seat, put the worn side facing away from the ratio plug. Hand start the new lock nut onto the valve stem, making sure that the flat end of the nut is facing the seat. Flip the stem over and tighten the nut into the vise. Use a 7 16 wrench on the flat area of the stem to fully tighten. Slide the cage over the stem, followed by the plate. Place the diaphragm over the plate with the raised side facing up. Hand start the diaphragm nut onto the threads. Apply a Loctite to the threads. Use a spanner wrench or Kimray diaphragm nut removal tool to fully tighten the diaphragm nut. Then thread the stem assembly into the lower stem using an adjustable wrench. Now secure the valve body in the vise and insert the cage assembly with the hole facing the same direction as the valve connection. Tap on top of the cage with a rubber mallet while applying pressure to the opposite side until the cage seats fully. The diaphragm edge must be near flush with the body. Place a Kimray stem guide on top of the stem. Seat the housing on the valve body. The breather plug should be parallel to the valve inlet. Remove the stem guide. Tighten the body in a crisscross pattern to avoid misalignment. For two, three, and four inch valves, tighten the bolts between 25 to 30 foot pounds of torque. Apply oil into the housing, enough to cover the communication hole. Thread on the diaphragm plate. Then use two flathead screwdrivers to make sure the stem is all the way up. Now remove the plate and install the spring into the housing. To install a diaphragm plate, you'll need to use a Kimray spring compression tool. Attach the tool to the housing and tighten it securely. Carefully compress the spring by pulling down on the lever. Then thread the diaphragm plate by hand about three full rotations. Relax the spring pressure while assuring the plate remains in place. 
it's important to make sure that the spring stays under the compression tool. Carefully remove the spring compression tool. Before fully tightening, apply a thread locker to the exposed threads. Now tighten by hand until snug and use channel locks to fully tighten. When it's tight, the top of the stem should be flush or slightly above the plate. Place the diaphragm over the diaphragm plate, bevel side up, and center with the bolt holes. Place the bonnet on the housing and align the supply inlet with the housing breather hole. Place the bolts in the bonnet and tighten the nuts in a crisscross pattern between 25 to 30 foot pounds. Place the spring on the indicator stem. Then place it into the bonnet. Place the gasket onto the travel indicator housing. Insert the travel indicator housing into the bonnet and tighten with an adjustable wrench. Apply thread locker to the breather plug threads and install it into the upper housing. Tighten until seated and the hole is facing down. Now I'm going to test the valve. We are using a two inch threaded adapter and two supply gas regulators. I'll thread on the adapter and attach my quick connects to the top works of the valve. I'm going to adjust the regulator to apply 40 psi on the upstream side of the valve. You should not feel air coming out of the downstream outlet of the valve. Now I'll send a 20 psi signal to the top works of the valve. If we've done this correctly, the valve will actuate and you should feel air coming out of the downstream outlet. That completes our repair. For any other questions, contact your local Kimray store or authorized distributor.